Welcome everyone to St Mary's Kelvedon for this special online service for our benefits of Kelvedon and Fearing. This is particularly aimed at those who can't get to church on Christmas Day, perhaps haven't been able to get to church throughout December, and uh, maybe not perhaps until sometime in the new year. It's for those who perhaps are isolated at home, having to isolate, those who are housebound, those who are working, those who are fearful or anxious because of the pandemic. But it's for all people. And I hope that you get some comfort and sustenance from this service of reflection and prayer. And we're going to start by lighting our Advent wreath. And as I light each candle, the four red candles for the four Sundays of Advent, and then the central white candle, the candle that represents Jesus, the light of the world, we're going to remember those in particular for whom Christmas may be a difficult time. So as I light these candles, let us reflect and remember and pray. Lord God, as we light these candles, we remember those who are unable to come to church this Christmas. All who are lonely, fearful, anxious or isolated. Those who are mourning someone who has died recently or has died some time ago. All who feel oppressed by the darkness and uncertainty of this time and fearful of the virus. And all who are working this Christmas. In our essential services, in our hospitals, in homes. And as we remember those who are continuing to work at this time, and all for whom this is a dark and difficult time, we light this central candle as a reminder that Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can quench. As John's Gospel puts it, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. So we hold all these people before God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you are the light of the world and you have come among us. Help us in this dark and uncertain time to seek to live by your light and to shine as lights in your world. May we bring your light and hope and sense your light and hope in our own lives this Christmas and into the new year. For we pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. We think of Jesus as the light of the world at this time. And of course in our northern hemisphere it's a particularly dark time, the darkest time of the year, the shortest days. And at this time, we find it difficult to focus on the darkness that may be inside ourselves. But that's what we do in this next part of the service, the prayers of confession, we call them the prayers of penitence, where we come before God, acknowledging our faults and failings, but asking him to forgive us and heal us and help us to start afresh. So in these three prayers, addressed to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'll say the line, Lord have mercy, or Christ have mercy, and you can just respond by repeating that line with me. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves, acknowledge our faults and failings, and confess them to our loving and forgiving God. God our Father, you sent your Son full of grace and truth. Forgive our failure to receive him and to live by his life. Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. 
Jesus, our Saviour. You were born in poverty and laid in a manger, an animal's feeding trough. Forgive our greed and rejection of your loving ways. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Spirit of love, your servant Mary responded joyfully to your call and despite the danger became the mother to Jesus. Forgive the hardness of our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw you to himself, that you may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, and be cleansed from all your sins, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now a short prayer we call the Collect, because it helps to collect together some of the main ideas that we think about at Christmas time, and our own thoughts and prayers before God. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven-touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Amen. Amen. Now we come to the reading, which is from Luke chapter 2, the first 20 verses, the Christmas story. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favours. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem, and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. Thanks be to God. It's such a familiar story, isn't it? You may know parts of it off by heart almost. I wonder if you noticed a number of things. You could start by saying the omissions. There's no wise men because they don't appear in Luke's Gospel. They're only in Matthew. And they come later, really, at least traditionally so. They come and we celebrate them in January. Now, we will be celebrating them too, anyway, at Christmas. But Jesus is never named in all the 20 verses. He's called this child or the child. He's not named, actually, until the next verse, verse 21, eight days after his birth, where, according to, to Jewish custom and law, he is circumcised and named at that time. But we know his name, and the writer knows that we know his name, and he expects us to know it. 
And Jesus' name, of course, means Saviour. That's what Jesus means. Yeshua in Hebrew. Joshua, actually. So if anybody you know is called Joshua, they've got the same name as Jesus. And it's quite a common first name, Christian name, in Latin countries like Spain, places like that. Anyway. And this child is done too at this time. He doesn't do anything. And what's more, Mary and Joseph are at the mercy of far more powerful forces. We start with the Emperor Augustus, the ruler of the known world, decreeing that there shall be a registration, a census, if you like, of all his subjects. And so Joseph, with Mary, dutifully goes to his hometown because he's been ordered to do so by the occupying power. He is at the mercy of these forces. And if you read on in chapter 2, you'll see that Herod, what am I talking about? You read on in chapter 2 of Matthew, I should say, you'll see that Herod, of course, wants to try and kill Jesus, and they have to escape to Egypt. And I think at this time, many of us feel at the mercy of forces that are far more powerful than we are. Not necessarily an all-conquering and all-powerful emperor, though there may be some politicians who feel that they ought to be that, and certainly some in the world who act like that, but this pandemic, with the mercy of something we can't see and don't feel we can influence in any way. And what the Christmas story tells us is that whether our names are known or not, there is more to life than these powerful forces. There is another force for good that is with even the most insignificant people and the most vulnerable and is on their side. For Mary and Joseph aren't special, though of course tradition has made them so, and Mary becomes the purest of the pure of all women, which is a bit of a burden for women, I always think. But it's their very ordinariness that's important. Joseph is a carpenter, an important trade. But he's not a king or an ambassador or a very wise, learned man. He's a carpenter. Mary would know almost nothing about her, except she was, she was young. She must have been in her teens. And these two people are entrusted with the very life of God, the Son of God. And ordinariness matters to God. The fact that we're not powerful, not influential, and feel at the mercy of forces that we can't see and are beyond our control does not mean that we are not beloved, that we are not cherished, for we are, each one of us, for each one of us has that same light that we call the light of the world, the light of God, the life of God is in us, were we but to know it and recognise it. So however small and insignificant you may feel, or lost, or anxious, or lonely, remember at this time in particular that you are a child of God, that you are loved by God. And whether people know your name or not, God knows your name and has always known it. And he names you in his heart, always. For you are his child. And you can learn to be that child of God through this story and through this one child, saying no words, doing nothing, have everything done for him as a baby has, but growing to be the man who showed us the true love of God and whom we seek to follow now. May your Christmas, wherever it is and whatever it is, be a time when you know this. We focus our thoughts on the Christ child laying in the manger, born so many years ago, yet still making a difference in our lives today. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of your Son, Saviour and Light of the world. Let us be still for a moment and reflect on God's awesome glory, thanking him for his goodness. Jesus, light of the world, 
hear our prayer. We pray for our church family here in Kelverton and Fearing and stretching out around the world. We pray also for those joining us today online through YouTube and for those who are unable to worship in church at this time. In a moment of quiet, let us feel God's love shine around the world in fellowship with our brothers and sisters in Christ and give thanks that we can worship freely without fear of persecution. Help us to remember that Christmas is the joyful celebration of Christ's birth. Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer. We pray for those who find themselves in lands where there is conflict, poverty and hunger, oppression and exploitation. We pray for those world leaders flexing their power to threaten neighbouring countries and creating instability throughout the world. For those who could bring peaceful resolutions to conflicts or relief to those who are starving or lacking medical aid. We pray for the refugees fleeing their homes in the hopes of starting a new, better life. Let us be thankful on our good fortune of being born in a country where we can live in peace with free health care and education for our children, yet recognise there are many who are homeless, living on the street or sofa surfing, many who rely on food banks to feed their children and those who will be too frightened of rising costs to heat their homes this winter. Jesus, light of the world, hear hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for your beautiful world. Forgive us the harm we are causing to your creation, our wastefulness of resources, the pollution we cause. We look around the world and see signs of climate change and the effect it has, particularly on the poor and vulnerable. We pray especially for the people of the Philippines whose islands were ravaged by the recent typhoon with tragic loss of life. We pray too for the victims of the mudslides in Myanmar and the flooding in Malaysia. Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are tired who despair or struggle with everyday life, for those with COVID, those facing isolation and the vulnerable, for the doctors, nurses and caregivers, for the scientists who work tirelessly to find vaccines or better treatment for the sick and dying. We pray particularly today for our Queen, facing her first Christmas without the Duke of Edinburgh by her side, like so many people who will have an empty place at their table this Christmas time. We pray for those who find Christmas hard to endure. May they be comforted by God's presence. Times are difficult for all of us. The pandemic rolls on and many continue to be fearful of contracting the virus. Let us bring before God all those who suffer, in body, mind or spirit, remembering especially those in our community and those in our hearts. Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer. We pray for those in our community who have recently died. Jean Ayres, Frank Fraser, Audrey Lawrence, John Stapley, and Norman Stedman, and for those who mourn their passing. We remember those who died at this time in former years. Jim Yule, Joan Garner, Robin Warner, Graham Murdy, Linda Wood, Stanley Staines, Maud Childs, James Banyard, Roy Hilliard, 
Stan Cornell and Bill Briley. Let us remember too those precious people who are no longer with us but confident that they are in God's house waiting until we meet again. Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for the angel's message. May we be obedient to God's word, compassionate to the needs of others, and allow Jesus' light into our lives this Christmas and forevermore. Amen. Right. As we draw to the end of our service, I will bless our crib scene and then give the Christmas blessing. So as we celebrate the birth of Christ, let us pray that God will bless this crib, that all who worship his Son, born of the Virgin Mary, may come to share his life in glory. God our Father, on this day, your Son Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, for us and for our salvation. Bless this crib, which we have prepared to celebrate that holy birth. May all who see it be strengthened in faith and receive the fullness of life he came to bring, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And the Christmas blessing. And may your Christmas tide for the church, Christmas really only begins on Christmas Eve and carries on for the 12 days of Christmas up to the 5th of January. And then we have Epiphany with the arrival of the wise men to give their gifts to Jesus on the 6th of January. Of course, we celebrate them before that, of course. But may your Christmas be a time when you know God's blessing. May the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the love and faithfulness of Mary and Joseph, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this Christmas and always. Amen.